everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Nilav. The topic that we would be dealing today is genetic markers and in genetic markers we would be dealing with restriction fragment length polymorphism. Okay, so let us first of all understand what genetic markers actually are. So genetic markers are actually regions of DNA or particular sites on the, uh, on the DNA genomic content which can be used for recognizing a particular organism, a particular species because these are very specific regions that are present on the DNA or that are present on the genome of a particular organism, right? So this is uh, the basic about uh, genetic marker or markers, right? So let us understand what is RFLP. RFLP as the name suggests that first R letter is for restriction. The R letter here is for restriction. Next F letter is for fragment. L is for length. And P is for polymorphism. Okay. So in, uh, in complete sense RFLP is restriction fragment length polymorphism. Now let us consider each word at a time. What does restriction means? Restriction basically indicates to the restriction enzymes. What are restriction enzymes? Restriction enzymes are generally obtained from bacteria and these enzymes are responsible for cutting the strand of DNA at particular sites. Okay. So now these um, uh, restriction enzymes in bacteria are used to inhibit the entry or inhibit the propagation or inhibit the infection of viruses that is bacteriophages inside the bacteria right so uh, here we utilize these restriction enzymes and how do we utilize them we utilize these restriction enzymes to cut the dna segment that is with us and uh, very interestingly our dna or dna of a particular organism has specific sites, specific regions that a restriction enzyme can recognize. But these sites and these regions differ from person to person. Okay, we would go in detail of this uh, as the lecture progresses. So fragment means suppose the uh, a restriction enzymes, restriction enzyme cuts at this place and cuts at this place. Okay, so how many regions will we get? One, two and three. And once uh, and in another individual, if the restriction enzymes cut at this place, this place and this place, how many regions will we get? 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. So in the first case, we would get 3 regions. In the second case, we would get 4 regions and the length of these regions would also be different from each other. Okay. So that is what we mean by fragment length. Restriction I have already told you, fragment length I have already told you and polymorphism means differences, changes or different types of that is in complete sense there are different regions there are different fragments there are different fragments of different lengths that are obtained after utilizing the restriction enzyme in cutting the DNA of two given organisms or two given species right so this is what we mean by RFLP that is restriction fragment length polymorphism now coming to the second point it is non-PCR based technique. What does this mean? In generally speaking, most of the markers utilize the PCR method. That means that it utilizes PCR for multiple amplification or amplification of a, a particular given strand. But in this case, it does not utilize PCR. PCR is not used in this technique. Okay. This is very important. First genetic marker. What does this mean? It is one of the first genetic markers and after this only RAPD uh, that is uh, RAPD, ESR and SNPs are different markers have been identified. Okay, So this was one of the first genetic markers co-dominant. Now this uh, RFLP is co-dominant. What do we mean by co-dominant? By co-dominant we simply mean that this marker can recognize the difference between a homozygous DNA and a heterozygous DNA strand. Okay, 
Now coming to the variation in restriction sites. As I've already told you that a particular stretch of DNA obtained from a particular organism would have different restriction sites. Okay, it will have restriction sites at different places. Even uh, me as, as an individual and you as an individual would have different restriction sites in a particular stretch of a DNA. Okay, so whenever restriction enzyme is used to cleave this DNA strand, it would definitely cleave at different places. Okay, so when uh, different lengths of uh, fragments are obtained, this is called as restriction fragment length polymorphism. Okay, again in the last case, what, what have we written is restriction enzyme that is RE based. Definitely it is RE based restriction enzyme based that is what we have been talking up till now. Now coming to the requirements, what are the requirements of this particular experiment? In the first requirement, the first uh, thing that is required is DNA sample. Of course, we would be needing DNA sample. This DNA sample only would be cut utilizing the restriction enzymes. The second one is radio labeled probe. Okay, so what is the use of radio labeled probe? Once you uh, utilize the restriction enzyme and cut the DNA, you would get different strands of DNA. Now, how will you identify that the strand that you think would be present uh, is present? How will you judge that, that, that the strand that you are thinking should be present is present or not? You would be utilizing or you would be needing a probe which would go and hybridize with the DNA strand and tell you and uh, report to you that this particular DNA strand is present, right? So for that, we would be needing radio labeled probes. We will go into the details of this just as the lecture progresses. Now coming to the process, the process of restriction fragment length polymorphism. What is the process? Suppose, let us take an example uh, that there are two individuals, I1, I1 is individual 1, I2 is individual 2, okay? So these are the strands, this is the DNA strand. Again, this is the DNA strand. Now understand that this DNA strand, these two DNA strands have been obtained from I1 person, I1 individual and IT individual respectively, right? Now, once you use a particular restriction enzyme, suppose that we have utilized over here E -co R1 and here also we have utilized E -co R1. Now this is the enzyme that uh, restriction enzyme that is obtained from uh, E. coli, right? You all might be knowing this. So E. co R1 you, uh, recognizes G A A T T C. Once it observes this sequence, what does it do? It cuts the fragment from here, right? From G, it cuts it down. So whenever it will see that this particular uh, site restriction site is present, it will cut down. Suppose there are two regions in individual one that have GAA TTC or this restriction enzyme for eco R1. Suppose this is region number one and this is region number two in individual one that is these are the sites specific for eco R1, right? So how many fragments would we get after uh, cutting it down with the uh, eco R1 in individual one? This would be the first this would be the second and this would be the third. How did we get that? This was from here to here would be the first fragment, from here to here would be the second fragment and from here to here would be the third fragment. Okay, so this is what we will get, what we will get on and uh, observe closely that, uh, that the lengths of these segments are also different. Now coming to individual two, right? In individual 2, when, when we utilize the eco R1 enzyme, what do we get? We get, again, we get uh, three sites. This one is the first, this is the second, and this is the third site, right? So, after cutting, how many fragments would we get? First, second, third, and fourth. So, these are, so what, what, what I was saying is, in individual 2, we had these uh, three regions, three restriction enzyme regions, and we would get then four segments, four fragments that would be different, entirely different in length from individual one. Okay. So now in the next step, what we'll be do is we will go for gel electrophoresis. Okay. 
Now, in gel electrophoresis, this is of course agarose gel electrophoresis. What you will do is uh, you will take a gel and then you will cast or you will uh, use the ladder in the first uh, in the first column and in the second column you in the in the first well and in the second well you would use the DNA that you have obtained the fragments that you have obtained uh, uh, by from individual one and uh, this will run in this column and finally in, from individual two uh, you will in, in this lane in the third lane you would take the fragments that you have obtained from individual two and run them in this well in this column right so uh, after the gel has resolved completely you would see that uh, these uh, fragments uh, in case of individual one there are three fragments at, as we had expected one two and three and in case of individual two as we had expected there are four fragments one two three and four now what will we do is we, we will go for southern blotting what do we do in southern blotting we just uh, we transfer the materials we transfer that dna content that is present on the gel onto a nitrocellulose membrane okay and then what do we do is we uh, use a probe we use a probe and identify our region our dna of interest okay suppose let us uh, let us assume that uh, we want to know or we want to check that this particular fragment is present or not if this particular fragment is present or not what will we do is we will utilize a probe a radio labeled probe which will go and bind which will go and bind here because of the complementary nature it will bind to this fragment okay so and this of course would be radio labeled so once this hybridizes to this uh, fragment you can check that this fragment is present this black one is present or not because this the hybridized probe would emit radio label signals okay then you can uh, be sure but this would happen on the nitrocellulose membrane not on the uh, gel because the agarose gel is very fragile and you would not be able to get the desired result so this would be occurring in the uh, what do you say nitrocellulose membrane so this was a southern blotting and then finally you would identify or you would recognize this with the help of auto uh, uh, auto radiography in which you use x-ray plates and it will uh, it will show signals wherever the probe has bound to whichever segment okay so by this we would be sure that our dna of interest or the dna that we were looking for is present in the individual or not okay so this is how we can identify a particular person how we can identify a particular species okay now coming to the applications of uh, uh, RFLP restriction fragment length polymorphism first one is criminal disputes let us understand this uh, this application with the help of this diagram that we had uh, made let me just rub this so that it would be easy for us to understand this right okay so let us assume that there was a uh, crime scene and at the crime scene we have got some evidence and there are two suspects i1 and i2 for who might have committed that crime okay so what will we do is we will go for restriction fragment length polymorphism for individual one and individual two uh, and individual two suppose uh, uh, we we go for the individual one and individual two okay and we also uh, go for restriction fragment length polymorphism for a particular for the uh, the dna content or for the uh, evidence that we had got suppose we had got hairs from that particular uh, criminal scene and we also check out or we also take out the dna and restrict it with the help of restriction enzyme same restriction enzyme that we are going for individual two suppose now individual one is here individual two is here now this is the dna that we you had obtained from the crime scene then here suppose Suppose you get a band over here for the uh, for the evidence that you had obtained from the crime scene. You get a band over here, and this band matches with the individual two. Now, what you can say is that because this matches this restriction fragment matches with the restriction fragment that we had obtained from individual two, there are high chances, or there are full chances that this individual two has committed the crime. 
right? So this uh, this is uh, how we can use RFLP to sort out or to resolve criminal disputes. Similarly, we can utilize this technique for determining the parent of a particular child of a particular offspring. Phylo for phylogenetics also this technique can be used for genome mapping for disorder analysis. We can utilize restriction fragment length polymorphism. Now coming to the last portion of this presentation that is advantage and disadvantage. Now advantage of this uh, let us first understand the advantages of RFLP. Uh, the first advantage is co-dominant. I have already told you that uh, co-dominant means that it can easily recognize the homozygous and heterozygous regions. Reproducibility. If you conduct this uh, in one particular lab and then go on to reproduce this in another lab, these results would be highly reproducible. That means that you would get the same results in the first lab and also the second lab. Genome abundance. Uh, uh, by this genome abundance, we mean that these restriction fragments, these restriction sites are present throughout the genome. So they are very abundant. So you can utilize them easily. So that is what we mean by genome abundance. Now coming to the final one that is sequence specific. We all know that restriction enzymes have a very very uh, specific nature. They just cleave at a specific point. They do not cleave any other point other than their restriction regions. Okay, So this is very specific. That means this technique would also be very specific because it is dependent upon the restriction enzymes. Coming to disadvantages. This is very tedious very time consuming and costly. So you can see that we have to go through a number of steps and these steps uh, lead this technique to be tedious, time consuming and costly. Radio labeled probes. So the first the technique involves radio labeled probes at, as I have already told you. So this technique should be or can be handled only by skilled professionals who can use or who have the experience to use radio labeled material radio labeled probes. And finally, high quantity, which means that we have to get the DNA in a very large quantity to go through this uh, technique. To use this technique, we have to have a very high quantity, high amount of DNA. Okay. So this was a lecture about restriction fragment length polymorphism, which is also a uh, genetic marker. So I hope that this lecture would have been useful uh, for you and you would have been, you would be able to learn from this. If you have any queries regarding this lesson, kindly post them in the comment box. If you like this lecture, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.